Welcome back to McMaster University course, Computer Science 1JC3, Introduction to Computational Thinking. What you see here is a picture of Tim Berners-Lee. Tim Berners-Lee is the inventor of the World Wide Web. In 1989, he implemented the first web client and web server at the CERN laboratory, which is outside of Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, CERN is the European Organization for Nuclear Research. They have a particle physics laboratory for studying uh, subatomic sub particles. Now, in order to create this web client and server application, he developed the HTTP protocol communication protocol, and he developed the HTML language, and he developed the first web browser, which was called Nexus. He did all of these things, and he has, in many ways, transformed his technology that he developed, in many ways, has transformed the world. And he's won many awards. He's been made a knight in the UK, and he's won the Turing Award, in 2016, which, as I've said before, is roughly equivalent to winning the Nobel Prize in computing. So, what is the World Wide Web? It's a vast collection of documents and related services that are accessible via the Internet, and what makes them special is they're interlinked. And so, one document is connected to the other document, and when you explore this vast collection, you can be moving from document to document. And what we now call the web includes almost all information intended for the public. The only information that does not include that's intended for the public is information that hasn't yet been put on the web. But in time, pretty much all information intended for the public will be on the web. Now, web resources are identified using uniform resource locators, which are called URLs. Um, web services are obtained by requesting web pages using the hypertext transfer protocol, which is short for which is written shortly as HTTP, or related protocols, and web pages are written or rendered using, uh, or I should say written, using the hypertext markup language, HTML, or related languages. So the web is really one of the greatest inventions of all time. I would say it's has going to have far greater influence than both radio and television. It's roughly as influential as the printing press. Uh, okay, so we're going to look at each of these components for the World Wide Web. The first is the hypertext markup language. So with this, we can create documents called web pages, and they contain links to other pieces of information. And this information can be inside or outside the document. And they contain text and markup tags. So uh, markup tags will be tags that look like this, in the simplest case. And then there's text in between, and the tags tell how to handle that text. Um, they can include embedded images in interactive programs, and the files have a file extension of .html or .htm. And the information is represented two ways. One way is just a static file that can be rendered, or the other way is it can, the pages can dynamically, the file that's produced is dynamically created using scripts or programs that are assembled on the fly. So for instance, when you uh, request a report on the weather, you request a certain page, and what you get back will be that page and filled in in various places 
will be information for the weather at that moment. Now these links allow you to basically travel across the web. You can hop from machine to machine gathering up information. Um, now HTML files, if you've ever looked at them, they're difficult for humans to read and write, but they're very easy for machines to process. And so there's a whole slew of software tools that are used to develop and present web pages. So that's HTML. HTTP is something entirely different. It is a network application protocol. It's a protocol for enabling a web browser to communicate with a web server. So a web browser is really a web client. Remember, and we're using the client server modeling approach. So HTTP uh, allows a web client to request documents from a web server, but it also allows a client to offer documents to servers. It's usually not used this way, but that is part of the protocol. And the server is going to build the protocol uses TCP for transport. So information is going to be sent back and forth using TCP and web servers listen at TCP port 80. That's usually where they're listening, but they could listen at other ports as well, often named in some way related to 80, like 81 or 8,000, 80, 80, something like that. Um, so an HTTP transaction consists of a client making a request to a server and the server responding. And this protocol is completely stateless. The client makes requests, the server responds, and there's no, no record or no way of keeping track of how many times that client is making requests and how these requests are related. So this is not very convenient if you're doing something like shopping. So you know, in typical shopping, you, you browse around, you find something you want, want, you add it to your cart, you keep adding things to your cart, and when you're done, you go and check over what's in your cart, and then you pay for it, and then uh, it's someone will send it to you to your door later. Now, actually, there's no way with this protocol of keeping track what's in the cart. There's no way of tracking state. So this is what cookies are used for. Cookies are used to keep track of the state. This is something added to HTTP. Now, when you request a document, um, it can be processed both by the server and by the client. So you request a document, the server can process it, can fill in, like I mentioned, with if you're asking for a weather report, it can fill in current information about the weather. And at the server side, this is used something like the programming language PHP. And the client side, it's used by something like JavaScript. OK, so we mentioned these things called Uniform Resource Locators, URLs. They have six items. They have a protocol, which is the TC, usually TCP protocol that you're going to use to transfer the information, usually HTTP or HTTPS. In some old cases, it might be using FTP. Um, it has the host, that's where the server, that's for the server that has the information, the port, the TCP port that the server is listening at, the path, that's the path to get to the file on the server machine, and then you can have queries that you can make, and you can also refer to fragments of documents. So this is a general form. Here's a protocol, host, the port, which is optional, the path, and the query and fragment are optional. So this is example here. This is uh, the URL to my home page. And so this is a protocol. 
this is a host. This is the uh, port. Actually, this is not needed because um, it's assumed that if it's not something's not mentioned here, it's going to be port 80. And this is the relative path to the index page for my web server. Okay, so uh, the web provides a whole wide range of services in addition to being able to provide documents. Uh, there's many examples, I'll just mention some of them. Web search, uh, web user interfaces for programs and databases, shopping, banking, maps and direction, weather information, and social media. Okay, so this completes our a quick overview of the World Wide Web. Uh, and this completes this topic. Thank you very much.